Thank you all. You know, it's been uh, about two years and eight months since uh, we recorded that video, and it, uh, I can tell you it does not get any easier, and I pray that none of you ever have to record such a video, which is why today I'm really asking for all of your help to end this senseless, selfish epidemic that's impacting way too many of our young people. I'm talking about texting and driving, of course, and uh, let's not get caught up in the semantics, whether it's texting or social media, Snapchat, uh, looking up phone numbers, holding your phone and talking while you're driving. It's a dangerous behavior, and it's deadly. It's deadly. The data is clear. <clears throat> Unfortunately, we're all looking the other way. You all see it when you're driving on the roads. You know it's out there. You know how dangerous it is, dangerous it is but we tend to look the other way. It, unfortunately, has become a cultural norm. It's accepted. And again, it's the largest killer of our young people. We have to take action. <clears throat> My son Mitchell paid with his life for this cultural norm. As you saw in the video, Mitchell was killed by a young lady who made a bad decision, who was distracted, hit Mitchell, ran him across a median, and he was hit by an oncoming truck. She was doing something that many of you do, that millions of people do every day, that just simply has to stop. <clears throat> so let's talk about a few other cultural norms, because I'm convinced if we can change this cultural norm, we can save lives. Think back a few decades ago. How many of you recall being on planes with a smoking section? <laughs> can you believe that when you think back today? Could you imagine being on your flight and having someone behind you smoking, blowing smoke? Or if we lit up in this room, or on a plane, or in a restaurant, you would be appalled. The cultural norms have changed. And we did that because we knew it was unhealthy for the smoker and for the people around the smoker. Look at some of these advertisements. Talk about cultural norms. Smoking and drinking while pregnant, totally acceptable. And if you can't read this one, do you see this one? People are always telling me that smoking causes low birth weight. Talk about a win-win-win. <laughs> An easy labor, a slim baby, and full flavor of Winston's. It's incredible that that was normal back at that time. And of course, we laugh now, but um, think of some of the more recent ones. Just 30 years ago, it was totally normal for young people to drink and drive. Happened all the time. It was dangerous. But it took us about three decades and a group of what we used to call crazy mothers, mothers against drunk drivers, who made a difference. They changed the cultural norm. How did they do it? They worked with local governments and legislators to change laws, stiffen laws, about drinking and driving. Not only did they do that, they sat in the courtrooms and made sure that these laws were enforced because they lost children like I lost Mitchell. They changed the norms. <clears throat> Of course, today, kids wouldn't think about drinking and driving. Designated drivers, Uber, Lyft has changed the norm. <clears throat> so now let's talk about this latest norm, distracted driving. Now the good news is, as distracted as everyone is, with social media these days, we believe we can change this norm very fast. And when I say fast, I talk in terms of minutes, hours, and days. This should not take us weeks and months and years to change this norm. More on that in a moment. <clears throat> so let's, um, let's at least acknowledge that we've had some success. Uh, we've created awareness in general. In fact, 94% of people surveyed these days are aware of the dangers of driving and using their cell phone. However, 84% admit that they still do it. So there's work to be done. So we're on a three-year journey, myself, my family, my friends, since we lost Mitchell. We were in shock, and we decided that we needed to do something to celebrate Mitchell's life, and we needed to change the world, because Mitchell always wanted to change the world. So we started the Kiefer Foundation, and we've done some amazing things in the area of awareness. We uh, worked with MDOT and put guardrails uh, at the point of Mitchell's crash. We thought it was a bit of a ceremonial thing to do, a symbolic gesture. Those guardrails have been hit over a dozen times. They've saved at least 12 families from going through what we're going through still today. We know we're saving lives. 
We put billboard, you can clap, that's right, thank you. <laughs> Billboards have been raised to, to raise awareness. We uh, dedicated the ice rink that Mitchell uh, used to play hockey at, uh, USA Hockey Rink in Plymouth. And uh, now all the visitors that go to this rink see the signs that say, put your phones on ice. 500,000 visitors per year see these signs, see these messages. It's changing behavior. We're working with nonprofits like the Peers Foundation, who brings virtual reality simulators into schools, over 100,000 young people educated with virtual reality. The Brakes Foundation, bringing safe driving skills to many states throughout the country, in fact, to the city of Detroit here next month, uh, where they're bringing needs-based training to young people, safe driving. So we're having an impact. <clears throat> but we feel now we have to do something more. We have to move towards legislation. Sorry, can we just back up one second? The um, laws of 30 countries around the world have hands-free device bans. You cannot hold a hands-free device while driving a car. If you saw that uh, previous sign in the UK, penalties of 200 pounds and uh, six points for a first offense. They take it seriously. Our friends in Canada take it seriously. Hands-free laws are the norm in the rest of the world. Look at the United States. 47 states in the country have no texting laws, texting bans, but you all know that they are not effective. They are not enforceable. Talk to your law, law enforcement friends. They are not enforceable, including here in Michigan. You still see, in a state where we have a no texting law, you still see texting and driving uh, all over the roads. 18 states, and now just last week, 19 states, have enacted hands-free laws. Laws that say, basically, if you hold the phone in the car, it's a primary offense, you're pulled over, you're ticketed. These are effective. These are saving lives. In these 19 states, they're already showing a significant reduction in crashes and fatalities. They work. <clears throat> and as a secondary effect, the hands-free laws are decreasing insurance costs. The number of claims, the frequency, and the severity of the claims are significantly down because of these hands-free laws. They work. They really do work. <clears throat> So we decided we needed to make a difference in Michigan. We started a campaign called Hands Free Michigan. Governor Whitmer was kind enough to invite us to the State of the State Address. My family and I attended, and we have now tried to get awareness around this campaign. There's multiple laws that are currently uh, being proposed in the House, in the Senate, and I'm hoping today, I'm hoping on this trip, we can get some alignment so that we can start getting this state to move towards hands-free legislation. <clears throat> you know I'm passionate about this. I would tell you, when I look at somebody holding a, a phone at a traffic light, they might as well be holding a gun. It impacts me that way, that severely. That's how I feel about this. This is dangerous and we're killing people. <clears throat> So let's talk about it. And this is, again, quite sobering because I hate to say most of you will be impacted by distracted driving this summer during these 100 deadliest days of summer. Why do I say that? It might be a panic stop as you look up from your phone and see that the person ahead of you stopped. Or maybe it's the person behind you that stops in a panic fashion. They may spill their coffee, like this gentleman. Not very severe. Might be a fender bender, a little bit of damage to your car. <sighs> or in the worst case, it might be one of the 400,000 injuries or the nearly 4,000 deaths that we have per year due to distracted driving. I tell you, it's not worth it. I'd like to make this very personal very quickly. So please, for just one moment, I ask all of you, close your eyes and think about a loved one. Think about your son, your daughter, your husband, your wife, the person most important to you. Think about the last time you saw them. Close your eyes. Think about the last time you saw them. What were they wearing? What was their mood? What did you say to them? Did you hug them? Did you tell them you loved them? Imagine that's the last time you'll ever see them. I go through that every day, the loss of Mitchell. So what would you do to protect that loved one? What would you do personally to protect the life of your loved one? There are things we can do right now, and it starts with this hands-free legislation. <clears throat> and time is of the essence. This stat 
was the most alarming stat that I learned after we lost Mitchell. Nine people every day are killed by distracted drivers in this country. Nine people every day. Every day that us, we, us in this room don't do something, it's another nine people lost. I'm begging all of you to help us. We need to change this. So I have one last challenge. <clears throat> My goal is to have all 1,700 people on this island aligned and convinced of this. And I work in hours and days, so we have till Friday. <laughs> the data is indisputable. It's obvious, it's clear. So I hope that you're somewhat convinced by what I said here. So I ask you this, if you're not convinced, see me afterwards, see my son Blake my daughter Juliana, who are here giving out t-shirts and sweatshirts that say hands-free Michigan, and tell them why, you, why you're not convinced. We will convince you. We'll convince you. And if you're still not convinced, I ask one small favor. Brief 30-second video clip explaining why you think it's okay to oppose this type of legislation, why you think it's okay to not support this activity. We will help you get it distributed, we'll help you get it out on social media, and we'll let everyone know that there's another side to the argument. But I'm telling you, this should not be controversial. This should not be partisan. This is not abortion. This is not gun control. This isn't auto insurance. This isn't even marijuana. This is common sense. We should all support it. And I guarantee you we can save lives this summer if we can get this type of legislation enacted. So please join us. And for those of you that uh, are already convinced, I'll just finish by saying, take the pledge, put your phones down, focus on the road. You're driving a dangerous machine. I appreciate the support that we've gotten from many of you. And I would ask that you uh, Take a moment, stop by, pick up a t-shirt, pick up a sweatshirt, pick up a wristband, support the cause, help us end distracted driving. And if you support us, I ask that you stand and show your support right now. Thank you.